Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Stukin Expert Session. My name is Trevor Erickson, and I will be the webinar organizer today. And I'm super excited about our guest speaker today. His name is Matt Umbro, and he he has a ton of PPC experience. Um, he's been a member of the the PPC industry for um, about seven years now and has actually managed hundreds of, of um, pay-per-click advertising campaigns. He's going to be talking to us about how to grow a community and brand online and share with us the awesome story of how PPC Chat um, came to fruition. And um, real quickly, he's, he's also a writer for Practical E-Commerce. And if you haven't been, if you haven't jumped on that site um, before, make sure you, you do it, especially if you're in uh, the e-commerce space. There's, there's lots of uh, awesome articles on how to grow and build um, your e-commerce website. Um, but today, Matt's going to be speaking more on pay-per-click and how he uh, started and grew the brand of PPC Chat. And so uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn the time over to Matt. Thank you, Trevor. And thank you, everyone, for having me. Uh, very excited to be a part of Stu Kent. And, um, you know, I really am excited to tell the story of how PPC Chat came to be um, because I think it's an important story in terms of not only growing a community, excuse me, but growing uh, your own personal brand. And as uh, I, I was in your shoes, you know, just seven years ago, um, about to enter the workforce, and I think, you know, my story here. Hopefully, um, you can get some tips out of it in terms of, you know, what to do next in your uh, once you start your career and and moving forward. So, uh, Trevor uh, did a great job um, uh, explaining, you know, some what I've done and so forth, but just a couple other. Tidbits, uh, like you said, I've been a member of the PPC industry since 2007. I absolutely love what I do. Managed over 200 PPC campaigns, you know, anywhere from budgets, you know, hundred dollars to a hundred thousand a month. Um, I'm a writer for Practical E-commerce. You know, if there are any entrepreneurs in the audience today, definitely check out that site for tips on growing your online business. And then finally, I'm a huge fan of the Boston Red Sox. Uh, go World World Series champs. Um, they, a few years ago, they weren't doing too hot, but uh, back on top now. So in terms of the outline, what I'm going to do first is talk about entering the workforce and you know what happened once I graduated from school and started to go into the workforce and you know finding a job and then uh, ultimately growing from there. I'm then going to get into the beginnings of the PPC chat and the goal I had in mind for PPC Chat uh, before it began, really why it began. I'm then going to talk about how PPC Chat started to gain momentum within uh, the PPC world and, and grow its own online community. I'm going to then talk about solidifying the brand of PPC Chat, and this could almost say solidifying your personal brand as it applies to uh, not only the PPC Chat brand, but what you want to do uh, for yourself. And then I'm going to get into some final notes. And if anyone's curious, uh, the picture on the left is of my cat Dublin. He makes it into all of my presentations. Uh, sometimes my wife is jealous of him. And speaking of my wife, um, so this awkward photo of me came the day I graduated from the University of New Hampshire in May of 2007. Uh, the beautiful girl next to me would become my future wife. So I graduated with a degree in communication and a minor in business administration. That all sounds good on paper, but really the road ahead would lead me to areas I never knew existed and initiatives that I didn't yet know I was capable of. So that summer, I ended up applying to many jobs. Um, I was ready to enter the workforce, and more importantly, I wanted to show what I could do. And quite frankly, I was just uh, sick of you know hanging out at my parents' house and not doing much during the day, so I needed to find a job. And finally, I would soon have to be in paying back my student loans, so I needed to make some money. Um, 
in July, I, I applied to a company called Pixel Media as a search engine marketing associate. And frankly, I had very little knowledge of online marketing and the web in general, let alone search engine marketing. Uh, but this position incorporated elements of marketing, writing, and client communication, which I knew I was going to So after submitting my resume and cover letter, I didn't hear back from the company. Uh, about a week went by, and I emailed Pixel Media and also followed up with a call. Uh, I was able to speak with the HR director and schedule an interview at the office. So I guess tip number one is be persistent when it comes to finding jobs, because they're not going to get in touch with you. You have to make the effort to get in touch with them. So during the interview, I thought I presented myself well. Uh, I spoke to my strengths and also acknowledged that I was new to the workforce and would need to learn, but that I was more than willing to. Uh, my last interviewer was one of the co-owners of the company. Um, imagine that, you know, going to your uh, interview for hopefully your first job and then the co-owner of the company comes in. So he flat out asked me why I was applying to this job with no experience. Again, I did acknowledge that I was new to the workforce, but I also made it clear to him that I would work hard to succeed and that lack of preparation would never be an issue. About a week later, he called and let me know I was hired. Now, years later when I, when I left Pixel Media, um, I, you know, I, one of the final things I said to him was, so uh, did I, was I worth the investment? And he, and he said, absolutely. And that made me feel really good and it justified you know, entering this career and, and working hard. <laughs> so here's another picture of me with a nice Google AdWords shirt. Um, I actually, uh, my hair's a little short in this one, and I actually don't wear glasses anymore. I, I got LASIK surgery, but, um, you know, showing a past photo. So during my first two years at Pixel Media, my primary areas of practice were search engine optimization, or SEO, and uh, pay-per-click marketing, uh, or PPC. I found myself gravitating toward PPC because I enjoyed the immediacy of it. Uh, to, for example, I could bid on keywords, write two different pieces of copy, and quickly get results. Uh, SEL really involved much more patience, as you wouldn't really realize the fruits of your label, labor until months later. Don't get me wrong, I, I think SEO is great, and for people who do SEO, um, I think it's amazing because I. You know, in this today's day and age, I couldn't do it, but uh, PPC is really where I gravitated toward. So as I started to do more PPC, I made a point to showcase my work um, in day-to-day in -day activities. When I saw great results, I would reach out to clients for testimonials and case studies. I think during, my, during the course of my time at Pixel Media, I wrote four or five case studies that we showcased on the website and, and could send to pr prospective clients. Uh, I also regularly began blogging on the company site. Uh, anything, you know, basic PPC methodology to new ideas I had, but really those first couple of years at Pixel Media not only allowed me to learn a new industry, but to begin growing my personal brand. So by the time August 2010 rolled around, I had been at Pixel Media for three years. Uh, I had a pretty solid grasp of the PPC industry at this time and, and really loved what I was doing. I read all the industry blogs. Uh, by that point, I was an active member of Twitter, uh, following and communicating with well-known PPC professionals on a daily basis. And you know, most importantly, I was also starting to present my own ideas, while also analyzing PPC theory. And what I mean by that is, you know, when some, something like when new updates would come out, you know, one of the things I did was write how I thought that would affect. PPC management and you know some uh, different ways that you could uh, manage PPC campaigns now that specific new features came out. But the bottom line was I was trying to, to critically think as these new initiatives came out and look at the data and be able to um, tell a story from it. So during my um, review that year, I had set some pretty high goals for myself. My main goal was to be one of the top 20 names in the PPC industry by the next year. You know, I, I didn't really know how this goal would be measured, but I did strongly believe that at least anecdotally I could reach that milestone. Now, I, did, I didn't set this goal because I was overconfident. 
I really said it because I felt I was a part of an industry that was about to boom and strongly believe that I could be a major player. So as I alluded to in the previous slide, I was very active on Twitter. Um, Twitter was my go-to source for PPC blogs, questions, discussions, and so much more. You know, people would post uh, links to their blog. You know, we'd all communicate when we had questions. It was just you know really an on-demand place to find PPC knowledge. So at that point, I was the only PPC specialist at Pixel Media, and Twitter allowed me this interactive digital knowledge base. So fresh off my lofty, fresh off my review and, and lofty goals. I really began to think about how Twitter could be used to bring the PPC community together. So after checking out Twitter chats such as SEO chat and blog chat, I thought to myself, why can't we have our own PPC chat? So on February 14, 2011, I sent out the first tweet utilizing the hashtag PPC chat. And this, in fact, is the tweet. I sent this out on Valentine's Day 2011 gauging the interest of uh, PPC chat to the PPC community. The format would really be simple. Uh, I would moderate the chat by asking questions while others, uh, myself included, would answer. Uh, think of, you know, just a Q&A panel, essentially, but, you know, just ongoing and uh, people sharing their knowledge. So, again, photo of my Red Sox winning the World Series. Uh, overall response was highly positive. People were extremely interested in participating in such a chat, and they really relished the idea of a new community focused solely around PPC. I think they felt that it was somewhere they could go to um, really learn about their industry and ask questions about their industry. And it was kind of a unification uh, for all us PPC members, because at that time, PPC, although it had been around for eight years or so, you know, it was still relatively new and was uh, still in SEO shadow. So it was definitely growing, and you know, I think we were all glad that we had a place to express our ideas in discussion. So the first ever PPC chat, which utilized the hashtag PPC chat, occurred on April 5th, 2011 at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And here you're looking at what I'll get into in a minute as the initial screen cap for PPC chat. Essentially, a, a transcript of the of the chat, but we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, that first chat, we had about ten participants. Uh, I asked various PPC questions across many topics. Seven of the ten questions were asked in the hour and ten minute chat, so you can see that many good discussions were raised. Uh, additionally, the PPC industry leaders, such as David Satella. Melissa Mackey and Chris Kostecki attended, and I encourage you uh, to look them up on Twitter and look up their blogs and see what they do, because these are some of the people that influence my PPC learnings. So with any project like this, the hard part is staying consistent. The quote in this slide really rings true, as it's much, tough, much tougher to remain consistent to, than to be a flash in the pan. In fact, I, I compare this quote to another one of my favorite teams in New England Patriots. Um, over the last 14 years, the Pats, I think, have won at least nine or more games every year, and with a league that goes in constant turmoil, turmoil they're consistently good. And really, that, that's what I wanted PPC Chat to be. I didn't want it to have moments. I wanted it to be consistently good. So in order to grow the PPC Chat community, I had to make a commitment to have the chat every week and to adequately prepare for it. So on top of a full-time job, dedicating enough time to extra projects like this can really be tough. Uh, the PPC chat following was steadily growing, but some updates would be needed to sustain, to, to, excuse me, to sustain the chat. So after consulting with James Svoboda, of, uh, the CEO of the Search Engine Marketing Agency Web Ranking, I ended up changing the time of PPC chat to Tuesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, this time was better suited for more people to attend because it occurred during work hours instead of on people's personal times. The chat still occurred in the late afternoon in the UK, which we do have a lot of participation from, but it was better than the previous uh, uh, few chats where it occurred in the middle of the night. One thing I also started to do, and you'll see on this slide, is I made a point to send out five to seven tweets in preparation for the chat, keeping it top of mind. Excuse me. So every generally I, I post a topic Thursday on LinkedIn, and then Friday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday 
you know, I'm always uh, saying what the topic will be. I'm emphasizing the stream caps. We have a PPC chat badge. Again, something I'll, I'll get into in a little into a little bit. But basically, um, I just kept putting it in front of uh, people's Twitter feeds and making sure they knew that it was there. So. Finally, one of the major changes was that each session would now yield a single topic. Uh, chat topic might be uh, PPC account structure or psychology at PPC. And the chat wasn't just confined to technical aspects, but the theory of PPC as well. You know, in other words, why people click ads or uh, what makes a great ad. You know, really, the topic could be anything from the world of PPC. So a final piece that added the sustainability to BPC chat was the introduction of the stream cap. And what this means is that after every chat, Paul Crabthorpe, also of web ranking, would transcribe all of these tweets and questions into an easy to read digestible format. And you can see from the screenshots here, uh, you know, he'd include the question and then the answers. And then um, he'd have, uh, he put resources that were talked about in the chat down at the bottom of the page. So at the time, these stream caps were, pro were posted on my personal blog, which was theppcblog.com. Along with the questions and answers, the stream caps also included these resources and the list of participants who were tweeted during the chat. So with the transcript, or sorry, with the transcripts now having their own pages that could be linked to from other blogs, it would also show up in the search engine results page and that, I think, is another um, uh, little, uh, uh, a good fact that really helps PPC Chat is that the, every week there's a new page going up on the site with uh, keyword-rich content that can be found and ultimately you know, help in the organic rankings um, and drive more people to the site. So as the weeks went on, uh, the PPC Chat following grew on any given week. Uh, we have anywhere from 50 to 100 participants uh, with countless others following the chats but not commenting. We call them lurkers, you know, just uh, seeing what's being said on PPC chat, taking it all in. So we also have a PPC chat Twitter list of nearly 400 members. And again, if you see a uh, uh, stream cap, you'll see the Twitter list at the bottom. So. Not only were more users participating in the chats, but the hashtag was being used throughout the week. Um, users ask questions, share blog posts, and update others on new ad, form or ad formats or betas they had seen. Uh, companies were even starting to use the hashtag to promote jobs. I know um, Get Found First and uh, AimClear uh, used the hashtag when they wanted to find some new uh, PPC members. And the screenshot here, it just shows an example of, you know, how the feed may look where people discuss uh, certain items, you know, they have fun, and, you know, it's just, it, it's just fun to follow. So as the community grew, so did its reach. In May of 2011, I received an inquiry to interview for a senior level PPC position at Exclusive Concepts, which is located just outside of Boston. Uh, within this inquiry, uh, PPC chat was referenced as the primary reason for reaching out to me. In fact, one of the agency employees at the time had given me a good recommendation based upon his involvement in the chat. Uh, I interviewed for this position and soon after was hired. So I've grown with this agency now and I'm the director of paid search and you know I to be honest, I couldn't find a screenshot for or a graphic for this screen, so I ended up um, just taking the, my bio from the uh, actual Susan Concept site. But over the past two years, I've really reveled in my experiences at Susan Concepts. <clears throat> I'm in a place where I'm challenged every day, and I absolutely love the work that I do. Uh, my experiences on a day-to-day -day basis help to bring many new topics to PPC chat and get others' opinions. In fact, um, the PPC, PPC chat helps me to really enhance my own knowledge. You know, every chat I, I generally get at least one or two items that I um, use when I uh, in my day-to-day -day work. In fact, my schedule is actually blocked off in my Outlook calendar every Tuesday at noon. So, as PPC chat approached its one-year anniversary, I really wanted to emphasize that the chat was here to stay. Uh, the community was strong, but I wanted to keep building. So I reached out to a friend to create a logo for PPC Chat. 
what you see here is the initial concepts that she came up with. And, you know, I, I show this slide because um, me, I have, I have absolutely no inclination for graphic design, um, terrible at art, can't draw, but it, it's important that if you are looking to grow a brand, you know, I found that things like logos, um, you know, getting the exposure out there is extremely important. So I really stepped out of my comfort zone to find an area uh, to grow, and really the logo was the first area. So here's what the final version of the logo ended up being. I was able to start using this logo on my site, uh, social channels such as LinkedIn, Facebook, and Google+, and in any materials I created, I uh, was able to showcase the logo. So PPC Chat wasn't just a, a website or a concept. It had a logo identified with it. With it. Uh, this logo has since been updated, which I'll discuss in a little bit. So along with using the logo on LinkedIn, I also ended up creating a PPC Chat LinkedIn group. So aside from Twitter, this medium has really been the best channel to promote the stream caps and the upcoming chats. Additionally, people, people share their blog posts here as well. Um, you can see that these couple users have shared some posts, and then you can see uh, my listing for uh, a recent uh, PPC chat. So as of April 1st, this group actually has uh, 1,076 members. So uh, I'm really happy about that and how that's, uh, that's really good. The next part uh, in terms of solidifying the brand is that in December of 2012, I really decided that I needed to rebrand my site. Um, the site was still listed as the ppcblog.com, which was severely out of date. And honestly, the, the site was, was just awful from a design perspective. It was a basic WordPress theme, and it, it didn't represent the new PPC chat brand at all. So I did look to buy the domain, uh, www.ppcchat.com, but unfortunately, it was taken. So I ended up buying uh, ppcchat.co. So someday I might try to buy .com, but I uh, decided to go with the, the .co, and you know, so far it's been working great. So the new site um, ended up being much more in line with the goals of PPC Chat. Along with the stream caps, uh, the site also includes an archive of all PPC Chat stream caps. We have a Meet the PPC Chatter section. Uh, which gives bios of myself, uh, James, and Paul. We have an About PPC Chat section, which gives a brief history of the chat and description. And, now, and we also have a Contact Us se section for users to submit ideas, future topics, or anything else. And the site, of course, also includes links to all PPC Chat social channels. And in January of 2013, this new site went live. So I wanted to keep this momentum of the site running. So I thought about ideas for getting more exposure and ultimately more links back to the site. So what I did was I asked my designer to create a PPC chat badge that others could place on their site. Now, uh, some of the big conferences like SMX, uh, Hero Conference, they do the same thing. They have, they create banners that visitors can put on their sites. You know, I'm speaking banners or so forth. Why does it give that person's site you know, great recognition, but it helps mm -hmm. improve the brand awareness of the, um, of the conference or the agency or so forth. So I, I asked my designer to create this badge. Um, the badge includes all the pertinent information about PPC chat, and I was thankful that industry-leading PPC sites like PPC Hero, uh, Clicks Marketing, uh, Righteous Marketing, all have put the blog, or, or all have put the badge on their sites. And you know, I, aside from being extremely thankful for that, it, it just you know, it's been great because it's helped improve the reach of PPC Chat and really showcasing you know what I want to do with it. So, uh, starting in the the spring of 2013, I thought of ways to monetize PPC Chat and put these funds back into the program. Now, ultimately, the costs weren't high for the brand of PPC Chat. I mean, we're talking about you know building a new site. Uh, we're talking about edits to the site. You know, I actually bought a sponsorship at, at Hero Conference one year, but ultimately, I was spending money out of my own pocket, and I needed to recoup some of it. 
and I was also spending about five to six hours a week outside of my day job working on PPC Chat. Uh, I needed a source of funds to be able to continually grow the PPC Chat brand. So since the chat had been received so well, I decided to start offering sponsorships. And how I did this was companies could get their name out to the audience by sponsoring specific chats. And here's an example here. Um, you know, we'll be discussing getting started with Twitter ads, and today's chat is sponsored by at Perfect Audience. So we link to their, or we put their Twitter handle, and then in the stream cap, we give a brief description of the um, uh, the company and link back to their site. So to date, the, the sponsorships have worked out really well and allowed me have allowed me to put money back into PPC Chat. In one of those areas, I put money into was a new logo. So earlier this year, I asked my designer to mock up some new concepts. Again, here are the the initial concepts that she had come up with. Uh, ultimately, <clears throat> option number two ended up most resembling what the new site logo looks like. So with this new logo design, I want to make sure that the logo did include my website URL. The previous version didn't, and I wanted to make sure this one did. So whenever someone saw that logo, they also saw my website URL. Um, additionally, I, I didn't include the hashtag on this lo logo either. I really want PPC chat to be more than just a Twitter chat. Uh, uh, my BHAG or my big hairy audacious goal for PPC chat is for it to be the go-to source for PPC news and discussion with everything. In other words, when someone thinks of uh, writing about PPC or sharing a PPC update, I want them to think that you know, PPC chat is the place to do it. Now, a great side benefit of PPC chat has been the ability to get my name recognized within the PPC community. I already spoke about how PPC chat helped me secure my job at Exclusive Concepts, there's also helped me to earn speaking gigs at some of the most prestigious conferences in the country. Uh, I've spoken at the All PPC Conference Hero Conference, uh, and will speak be speaking again this year. Uh, I just spoke at SMX West in San Jose, and I'm planning on pitching for future SMX and Click Z conferences. So, the PPC chat, you know, obviously has uh, I think has been you know, a, a great addition to the community and really been a great source for PPC information for uh, all PPCers out there. But personally, it's helped me secure these gigs and helped to grow you know, my own name in the PPC industry. So with that, I am complete. Um, if you want to connect with me, I have my email address there. Uh, I'm on LinkedIn, and you can tweet me as well, at Matt underscore Umbro. And I'll, I'll pass it back to you, Trevor. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Um, I'm looking in the the chat queue to see what questions have popped up. Do you see the the chat queue on your feature on your end? I do, yes. Um it looks like there's a few questions in there. Could you uh read those out loud um and uh answer those I think there's some more coming into but um, yeah sure so uh, the first question here is what ways have you monetized PPC chat so I, I hit on it before but basically um, I, I reach out to companies who would have uh, the PPC chat audience is good for them so for example, I'm not reaching out necessarily to agencies who manage PPC campaigns because all the participants are PPC specialists themselves, but I reach out to companies who um, sell add-on services to PPC, you know, such as a call tracking software program, such as a retargeting platform or a reporting platform. So really these sponsors are ones that want to get into, uh, want to expose their message to an audience that they know is extremely relevant to them. And like I said, uh, they, the sponsor, I, I include the sponsor in my tweet, we include them in the stream cap, and then ultimately when we do the, um, we, we post the stream caps on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Google Plus, and they, those all say sponsored by such and such. So it gives these agencies or it gives these companies um, some additional exposure that they might not have gotten otherwise. Um, so the second question here is 
If I'm looking to grow my personal brand, uh, where do you suggest I spend most of my time or resources? Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, Facebook? Um, so I'm a little biased here, but uh, Twitter to me is really the place to spend most of your time. I mean, Twitter is where I was able to find resources to learn a lot of great information. It's where I connected with other PPC professionals and, and still do. I think these other channels are, are important, especially LinkedIn, in terms of connecting to uh, these professionals within the industry. But Twitter is really the area where you can um, really have these on-demand uh, conversations and get real-time knowledge uh, as, you, as you tweet and, and, and listen in. So uh, here, here's an interesting question. How do you make sure people don't abuse the PPC chat hashtag during sessions? Uh, I like that one. Um, this this does happen. So we've had a, we actually have PPC chat spam, and I'm not quite sure how it happens, but um, there are spammers who uh, they must be automated bots or something, but will tweet the same message over and over and over. Uh, we also have um, there are. A, at various times, some companies that just keep posting on there, and you can tell they're express, uh, excessive uh, spam. So we do this a couple ways. One, um, one is that the community is pretty good at um, making sure we don't have this uh, spam. So, if not including the you know the robot spam, if someone feels that uh, you know a, a user is putting information out there that either doesn't make sense or isn't right for the audience and the community will speak out to that person. But in terms of the uh, the actual automated spam, um, programs like, like TweetDeck and Hootsuite, um, they have ways of filtering these out. I actually use uh, programs like uh, TweetChat, uh, twubs.com. Um, these programs don't necessarily have that, but there are programs where you can exclude certain messages, and generally these messages are um, pretty common throughout with the spam. So uh, I'd say the community helps to get the spam away, and also um, some of these uh, social media platform programs help to help to uh, get the spam going away. Right, Q4 here. Uh, I, I like that. I like that presentation. That's how uh, I say it in the chats. You know, we do Q1, such and such, and so forth. So Q4. Uh, what do you think has been the number one best thing you've done to grow PPC chat? It's a good question. Um, you know, I, I, I'd say a couple things. Uh, one, ultimately, I think it's just the uh, really making sure to tweet a lot and to keep it, keep the message of PPC chat in front of. Uh, uh, users' eyes. Um, I, I mentioned earlier, but generally before the chat occurs on Tuesdays, I've already sent out five to seven tweets uh, to my followers that talk about uh, you know what's going to be discussed, you know links to some other information, and then finally um, you know I'll post on LinkedIn as well and, and Facebook and Google Plus. But th I think that's ultimately the number one thing that has helped to grow PPC chat. But I think a close second and third are creating the, the logo and, and uh, badge. Uh, the logo, because like I mentioned, it gives recognition aside from just PPC chat being a, a concept, but there's an actual logo that people can see and associate with it. But the badge also, um, you know, it's a, it's a link back from other sites, especially some of these industry leading sites like PPC Hero, which um, I'm sure gets, you know, thousands of visitors a month and, you know, that's on every page of their site. So every time someone views PPCHero.com, they see the PPC chat badge. All right, Matt, I, I, don't, I think that's all the questions that are in the, in the chat box. Um, I had a question for you, then it slipped my mind. Um, I'm going to try and see if I can remember it before we finish this up. But one thing that Matt's done, wanted to mention was for, for those who uh, didn't get the chance to, to listen and view this live, he's opened it up for any of you. If you have any PPC questions, any questions regarding growing your own personal brand to, to hit him up on Twitter and um, he'd be more than happy to 
answer those questions for you um, when you do get around to doing this uh, presentation. Um, I can't remember that question, so I'll probably just, if I remember it, I'll, I'll tweet. tweet. Sounds great. Tweet Matt, but, Matt the question. Yeah. Uh, I'm always on Twitter, so, um, you know, tweet at me. Uh, participate in the PPC chats again, you know, every Tuesday at noon Eastern time. You know, we're always looking to grow the audience, and especially if you're interested in a career in online marketing, you know, I think it's a, a great resource to see what these industry professionals, um, you know, do on a daily basis, and they, they share their tips and knowledge. And uh, you know, again, uh, if you're looking to get a start, I think it's a great resource. Awesome. Hey, thanks for taking over. I, I just uh, remembered that question I had for you. I wanted I want to make sure we link up everything. Um, any outs, you know, outside resource that you've mentioned in your presentation, I'll be sure that we link these up in the show notes. But I was curious to know what programs or software that you use with Twitter, if there's anything, you know, special that you think um, some people may not know about that's helped you manage or grow PPC chat on Twitter. Sure, uh, that's a good question. Um, so, a few different tools, and you know, I preface this by saying that I know there are more. And to be honest, I'm actually a little kind of low tech, I think, when using these social media platforms. But um, the ones I'm going to talk about have really helped me throughout, and I definitely encourage them to everyone. Um, the first one is Dynamic Tweets, and that's just DynamicTweets.com, or it's, maybe dynamictweet.com, but um, what I've been using that since the beginning, and it allows me to automate my tweets, so all the tweets that go out on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday in preparation for the chat, um, they're all, they're 95% of the time they're automated, and I write them a week or weeks before, so that's really helped to save time and to get the message out there. During the actual uh, chats, I've used a few different programs over the years, and any one of them I, I would recommend. Uh, TweetChat.com, um, what you're able to do <coughs> excuse me, is follow a hashtag, or put it in the hashtag, and it will automatically follow it, and it will also automatically include it in all of your outgoing tweets. So and it'll include the character link, too. So I know with TweetChat, you know, I have 131 characters because of the PPC chat. Um, hashtag and the additional space that takes up that nine extra characters. So I have 131 um, characters to tweet. I've used uh, uh, twubs.com in the past. That's T-W-U-B-S.com. Uh, that's a good platform. You know, it does a lot of similar things as tweet chat. Uh, the interface is good. I've used, uh, recently I've been using a new program uh, called uh, tchat.io. Um, yeah, very, very similar to TweetChat and, and Twubs, but just helps you um, helps you monitor the hashtag and create tweets. And you know, really, the differences the differences between these throw three programs are just you know uh, usability. It really depends what you're most interested in and and what's going to be the best uh, yeah, usability for you. But um, any of these throw three programs really work for following the PPC chat hashtag. Awesome. Get, those are good to know. We'll, we'll be sure to link those up. I'm in the show notes, like I said earlier. But we really appreciate Matt for spending some time with us today. I know the Red Sox are playing right now, so um, I'm sure he's anxious to get back uh, to seeing what's going on with them. Make sure you, you follow Matt on Twitter. Um, connect with him on LinkedIn. And uh, thanks for tuning in to another episode of our student expert session series. And uh, we'll see you next, next uh, expert session.